Our next speaker is Josia Lutten. Um, he's a research fellow at the University of uh, Warwick, and he will present a talk on cell surface analysis of lattice light sheet microscopy data, which provide new insight into macropinocytosis. So uh, please, the floor is yours. Okay, excellent, thank you. And um, thanks to the organizers for allowing me to present our work on macropinocytosis. I'm just going to present a brief overview of everything that we've done. So um, it's going to be a lot of things going on here. Uh, I'll start off by just uh, explaining what macropinocytosis is. And it's basically where cells drink. They uptake fluid into these, um, they form these cup-like structures, which we call cups conveniently, um, which they then close off and uh, pull fluid inside the, uh, the cell. And uh, here is an example. This is a uh, dictostelium. Um, and you can see these uh, cups, they come in and then they close off and uh, it, the uh, forming vesicle gets pulled inside the cell. Um, and what you're seeing here, there's life act in red. And we've got a mark of a PIP3 in green. And PIP3 tends to form like, uh, these uh, patch structures, which then go into these cups. Uh, which we uh, can then uh, track um, in this way. So, uh, this, uh, so with regards to the methods, um, we have uh, we we uh, image the uh, cells on the uh, lattice light sheet. Uh, it uh, is a really great thing to do, to image the uh, the cells on because it, uh, we get a nice high resolution of uh, 0.1 microns and um, also temporally we get a three second frame rate. Um, and uh, so w what we can do then is we, uh, we have a segmentation method which I'll uh, talk about in a moment. And, um, and then from there we map uh, fluorescence onto the uh, segmented cell surface using just a near, nearest sort of, uh, maximal projection onto the, onto the surface. Uh, I'll be talking briefly about some VR software that we'll be releasing soon, um, which we use for uh, marking out the uh, cups. And then uh, finally, I'll talk about the analysis that we've done from all of this using the uh, PIP3 patches as a, as a reference uh, on the surface to uh, actually understand um, a bit more about the process. And then at the, at the end, I'll briefly talk about some uh, modeling that we've been doing, mathematical modeling. Um, so we have a segmentation method. It's not a deep learning method, which has the advantage that we don't need a lot of uh, manually annotated training data. Um, it's called the Curvature Enhanced Random Walker, and it basically uh, allows you to segment uh, complex surfaces with uh, just some seeding inside and outside the cell. And we do this all automatically, so uh, we can churn through any of any data, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we performed comparably to um, uh, deep learning methods. Uh, we'll just say that the, uh, the table on the, the column on the right of this table is slightly out of date. Uh, we are now actually fourth in the um, simulated cell data. Uh, so apologies to the researchers at Heidelberg, I think it is, who are now second. Um, so once we've uh, segmented our cells, we can then, uh, oh, let's get the other one, move back, there we go. Ah. There. Okay, so here, talking about the fluorescence projection, we can project um, the uh, fluorescence values onto the cells. Um, as I say, we just use the nearby um, maximal fluorescence values. Um, and we can do this with, with this is with uh, life atom PIP3. Uh, I'll just, uh, a side note, we get this, uh, because this uh, segmentation method's only designed for single cells at the moment, I'll talk about that in this future work. Um, we, we sometimes, uh, if you get uh, cells touching, then the other one just pops in for a bit. So. Um, but that's something that we can, that we're working on. Uh, we can also work on uh, other markers, as I say. It doesn't really matter which uh, sort of things we segment. And the, the, uh, here we're looking at PIP3 and NAP. And NAP 
is uh, a marker basically is associated with actin polymerization. And this is important biologically because of the, uh, um, because what we see is this nap is at the, the edge of the PIP3 patches. Uh, so we are looking at polymerization force at that edge. Um, and this is what you see in the, the movies. And we wanted to, to show this sort of thing with um, using the uh, surface methods. So now a little bit on the VR software. So this is VR train AI. We are, will be releasing this uh, very soon. Uh, and I've just, uh, here's an illustration of a few of the features. We actually, the, uh, the uh, video on the bottom left is the one that's most relevant here where we uh, place these little pink markers and we can export them as CSV and then uh, we use them to uh, select our individual cups for analysis later. Uh, we also have, uh, it can also uh, paint, we can also paint the mesh with, uh, with this software and we've actually been working on using this for uh, working on some machine learning techniques on the surface itself. Uh, which is really cool. So, uh, yeah, that will be coming out soon, and it's, that's quite exciting. Um, back to uh, macropenocytosis, and uh, here we see the. This is where we use the VR input to select the uh, individual PIP3 patches, which is the site where we get these cups forming. Um, and we actually just use a simple threshold on the PIP3 intensity to segment the, uh, the, 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 the patch itself, uh, but we use mean curvature to just guide the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the segmentation of the patch itself. Um, and as I say, we were interested in the, um, uh, the values uh, relative to the boundary of the PIP3 patch. So when we, uh, uh, so when we uh, segment the, the patch, we then look at the uh, actual distance map. And um, when you see these, uh, these uh, we, we kind of get these distance bands, which what we do is we just average fluorescence values around those bands. And then we've kind of gone from 3D to the 3D initially to this 2D surface. And then if we average around the distance bands, then we're down to 1D. And it's nice and easy to actually understand. Um, so, what we also have to bear in mind is that when we're um, doing this averaging, whilst, we, whilst we've now got one dimension, just one dimension to work with, we also have um, the problem that, that cups come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So uh, we wanted to aggregate these. So we just uh, normalize the, the length uh, from like over dividing by the maximum distance. Um, and then that gives us an, a, a, a profile of the, uh, of the fluorescence um, relative to the uh, relative to the boundary of the patch, which we can uh, then aggregate and look at the uh, general trends. Um, so we've done we've done this process for uh, uh, 11, 12 markers, but I'm not, not going to go through all of these uh, here. Um, so the uh, the top right is uh, where we see the um, PIP3. Uh, fluorescence, and it, because we thresholded PIP3, we'd be very surprised if it wasn't high inside and low outside, as you see. So on the, um, this is the sort of the center of the, the, the patch or the center of the cup. And then this, uh, this line here marks where the, the boundary is. And then we just have a regular distance outside. Uh, so inside we have a high PIP3, Outside, it's low again. Uh, we also see high life act, which is kind of consistent along the, the, the patch. And uh, this is, seems to be some sort of a um, scaffold structure type thing to, to hold the, uh, the cup. Um, and the curvature we've uh, got in there, that is what we'd expect that you have, because you have this sort of lip structure at the edge. So it kind of bends outwards and then bends inwards as you go in, into the cup. Um, the other graph that I wanted to note here is again, this is looking at the, the NAP, and this is uh, NAP is uh, precursor to um, ARP23, which is involved in the um, polymerization of actin. Um, and so we have both NAP and, um, and a uh, marker for ARP, which we can then. Can you adjust the mic? Sorry? Can you adjust the mic?
Sorry, I, I hope I was loud enough in a way. Um, um, so uh, if, uh, if, if you have followed so far then, um, uh, this is um, where the, uh, the ARP, um, this, this, this indicates that we, we get this sort of polymerization zone at the patch boundary, which is what we were looking at in the uh, earlier surface and, and movie. Uh, a 3D movie of the uh, of the of the nap. So this uh, this gives us an idea of where the polymerization is happening. Uh, we can also look at the sort of the geometry of the surfaces uh, of of the patches. And so if we look at um, depth and perimeter, this it's, it's kind of difficult if you want to look at the lifetime because these things they have different time spans, you know, some, some will rapidly form and then close. Um, but what we see uh, is if we, if we kind of normalize everything in time and in the space dimension, just to get a, a look at how these, uh, these what sort of uh, pattern this, uh, uh, th these cups form in their, the geometry, um, we, uh, we can see that, that we do see uh, a kind of a, an expansion and then it slows down and this is similar for depth and perimeter and area. Um, towards the end, the, 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 the plots vary because the perimeter is the perimeter of the, the patch, which is as, as you go to closure, it's just going to pinch in as we see in the animation here. Um, and uh, depth kind of increases a bit um, but the uh, the main th feature that we're interested in actually uh, is how the uh, the patch stalls um, when we go towards closure. Now, f the last result I want to show is we have um, two. This is more of a qualitative result that I'll just mention briefly. Is that we have two forms of closure. So lip closure, we have this sort of uh, inward motion at the lip. Uh, which uh, forms the vesicle and pulls in. Uh, then we have base closure, where we actually see just these vesicles budding off at the bottom. And I'm um, just explaining this briefly, uh, because we also see, can represent this in a mathematical model of macropenocytosis, where we see the uh, lip closure. This we've uh, used the uh, force at the boundary and then um, also stalled the patch, and this is how we, we get this, but I can uh, talk more about that another time because I'm running out of time. And this, uh, this we also see um, a structure that's similar to the tube-like structures we see previously. So um, finally, I just want to wrap up and say we've uh, got a lot of cool things going on. We've got the VR software, we've got mathematical modeling that we're working on, and uh, we've got uh, we've now got more funding to work on applying machine learning to surfaces, which we're going to be looking at evolving surfaces, and it's like really fun stuff that's going to go on. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you very much for, for a great talk. So any question from the audience? Oh, Ricardo, over there. Hi. <clears throat> Out of curiosity, what's the target for macropenocytosis? Would you then use a pathogen, for example, to, to look at macropenocytosis macro formation around it? And do you think the presence of, of a target, like a pathogen, might considerably influence the, the dynamics of, of the surfaces that you're trying to look at? And would the segmentation still perform extremely well under those conditions? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I imagine that the, that the segmentation would, would, could, could still perform well. I'm not so, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not so much a biologist, so uh, I kind of, I could, I can talk about the segmentation uh, uh, element. That, that, yeah, that, that, there's a, f a fairly general. If, if, if you're looking at sort of complex uh, geometry, then uh, the segmentation can, can perform quite well in, in, in a number of these uh, settings. But I don't know about the, the. the the specifics. We um, we've only worked on uh, it in uh, dictyostelium, okay. so um, a, uh, we, I, I'd expect similar things in um, uh, macrophages. I think is another common application. So. 
All right. Thank you very much. So I think in the interest of time, we should move on to, to the next talk. So thank you again.